Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're showing the same example that we showed you in the previous video, but with a different outcome. And in on top of that, we put down a sentence which is very important for us to learn how to utilize because this is the language we tend to use when we do a hypothesis testing and we want to express the result of that testing. So first of all, let's go back to the claim that we said that the average weight of students is 120 pounds with a standard deviation of 6 pounds. The null hypothesis says that the average weight of students equals 120 pounds. So what we're trying to do is show that that's true or not true. And the alternate hypothesis is that the average weight of students is not equal to 120 pounds. Notice that with the null hypothesis being equal to 120 pounds and not equal to or less than, because sometimes that's implied, we therefore have what we call a two-tailed test. We want to see if the average is less than 120 pounds or more than 120 pounds. Does it deviate enough when we take a small sample of students and we check out that sample? Does it tell us that we're deviating enough from the, standard, from the uh, mean of the population or not in order to claim that we can reject the initial claim? All right, uh, sample size in this case, instead of 100, is down to 36. We saw that the sample mean was 118.8, so we calculated the test statistic. And so we took the, the uh, mean of the sample, subtracted from that the mean of population, and divided by the standard deviation. When we do that, we get minus 1.2 divided by 6, which is a negative 0.2, and then we multiply that times the square root of the sample size. The square root of 36 is 6, and so we end up with a t equals to negative 1.2. Notice that at the level of significance of 5%, we're going to divide the 5% on the upper side and the lower side of the, the distribution of the population. We divide it into two, so we take 2.5% on each side, which gives us a z-score of 1.96% on the high side and a negative 1.96% on the low side. Where does that come from? Simply from our table. We find a table, we look for 2.5%, and we say, there it is, it's 1.96, so we just read it right off the table, and we do it both on the high side and the low side of the distribution of the population. Notice that when we have t equals negative 1.2, that places it into the non-critical region rather than the critical region, so therefore, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So, the sentence we can then say is, there is not sufficient evidence. So remember, we didn't fall into the critical region, so we could not reject. We failed to reject the null hypothesis. We failed to reject the statement that the average weight of students is 120 pounds. So if we fail to reject it, we have to accept the null hypothesis. So now let's read the sentence together and see what it says. There is not sufficient evidence. The reason is because the test statistic did not fall into the critical region, so therefore we say there is not sufficient evidence at the level of significance of 5%. Now, if the level of significance was 20% or 30%, we might have been able to reject. But we were not able to reject because at this level of significance, to show that the average weight of students is not equal to 120 pounds. We weren't able to reject the claim. And so therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We have to accept it and claim that the average weight of students is equal to 120 pounds based upon our hypothesis test. So here's the language. There is not sufficient evidence at the level of significance of 5% to show that the average weight of students is not equal to 120 pounds. Now, let's say that the test statistic fell into the critical region. Then the sentence would change like this. There is... So instead of saying is not, we would say there is sufficient evidence at the level of significance of 5% to show that the average weight of students is not equal to 120 pounds, that it's something else, bigger, smaller, whatever it is. But then we would be able to reject the null hypothesis. We would then claim that the alternate hypothesis is true. But again, so the only thing that changes is this. There is not if we can't reject the null hypothesis, there is if we can reject the null hypothesis. And that is how we use the language of statistics to express the result of this particular two-tailed test. And that is how it's done. <laughs> you don't seem too terribly excited about statistics. <laughs>